Yabrach Bishbaha Yisraya, the elect, the family of his calling, those that he has elected by the power of his sovereign will, that he needed no inputs from any of us to choose or to elect us. And for that, I do brach him. I bow in his presence. I do toda because of my own ability and my self-worth, I would have not elected me, but he has elected us. He has chosen Yisrael to set us apart as a nation that is kadosh, set apart to the service of his behat, his sukkah, his house, that he has created among Yisrael, and we are the subjects of Yah. And everything that he commands us and instructs us is because he trusts us to do what he commands. And that's vitally important, Yisrael, that Yah has a confidence in the remnant of his zira, those that he has elected, that they may bring forth the excellence of his honor, his beauty, and that it may shine from us in a beautiful way. And then those that are without the knowledge of Torah, they will ask us of the reason of this great tigva, this earnest of expectation that we delight in. And as we develop that earnest of expectation that our lev, our levim, trust in Yah with every ounce of substance, it is earnest that we set our compassion, our love upon. We seek constantly to understand, to know, to experience the wisdom of Yah. And as we began to do that, we will see that in the reflection of the house of Yisra in our attitude, our actions, our deeds, and how we perform the responsibilities that, that Yah has granted unto us. What a great privilege, Yisra that we are all earthen clay vessels, but yet he elected a people to establish them to be superior in their wisdom, their knowledge, their know-how, in the principles and the codes of his wisdom, uh, that he granted that unto a people that was not a people, that had no lineage or no heritage. Even when the naval cord was cut, they were left discarded. We are the outcasts of this societal structure of today. And so he doesn't want us to be like them. He doesn't want us to act like them. He doesn't want us to have the same spirit as them. He doesn't want us to do things as they do things. He wants us to be a people that is different. That there is a demarcation who is of Yah, who is not of Yah. That we do not compromise the principles of Yah because of some biological association. We obey the commands of the Most High with the forthright love, a heart that is sincere. And that our design, all that we do is that He may have the pleasure in all that we do, Yisrael. We are a nation of people that's putting everything before Yah. Everything. We're a nation of people that will compromise with the most wickedest of people. That are very wicked. That they have a disdain for Yah. They have no chava for Yah. They disregard the principles of Yah. And yet we show them great admiration. We show them a great honor, more than we show Almighty Yam. And that is the simple truth. And that is not what I want to teach on today. I want to teach today Yah's will on the climactic events that have transpired during this Sukkoth and give us some kind of identity in Torah as we wait upon the promises of Almighty Yah that there will be a, an expectation in our bosom. And we will be diligent about the affairs of Almighty Yah. And everything that is written or prophesied in the book, it must manifest uh, among Yisra'ya. 
And only the true remnant will be able to see, to understand, and to discern. He is not doing things to prepare the world for their eyes to be opened. That's why his mo'adim are so importantly. And that is why he granted unto us seven days of festivity, gathering, of fellowship. And then he brings us to the climactic end of the last great day, the Akharith. That we understand as the day began of the last day and it closes to the latter part of the day when the sun goes down. Then there's a broad range of emotions when this one is leaving or that one. The tears, the embracing. And so what we must do is embrace the totality of the Torah. And the power of the testimony that brings the witness of his light. The shining brightness of the awe, of the sincerity of our nature to obey the Torah of Omariya. It must be evident in our lives, Yisraya. It cannot be something that is partial or it is expressed at times that are convenient to us. But it must be expressed in times when it is not convenient unto us. When they are not the most opportunist times, we must express the will, the purpose of Omari Yah. Our name must be no, and our yea, our yes, must be implicitly yes. And we must follow the dictates of the Torah. There is no time to alter the stance of Yah, to turn around, to change, or to see if we can get a different perspective of what Yah is speaking through other forms that we can deduct from that. The only way we're going to understand, Almighty Yah, it must be through the revelation of his Torah. And let us not forget, he is going to always use a man. He created him for his beauty, his strength. That's what he did. He has not thrust him aside, although by one man, sin, came into the world of disobedient. And by another man, the forgiveness and the cleansing of all of our sins, where we are washed from the filth, the corruption of this flesh. He is still going to use man. I know how Hashatan despised that. He is going to use man. His gifts that you are sure granted unto the assembly, they are vital in this hour. We need the power of the shulish, ach, the one that stands. And the power of doctrine is established without doubts. And the no be that walks in the strength of that doctrine to tear down the strongholds of hell and to bind the powers that rises up against Yah. Or the power that rises up against Yom. And he must stand in the power of that truth. And those that are bearers of this bizurach of the teaching of the Torah. They must bring the delight of even Yah's blessings and riches. Uh, and Yah's judgment to the bosom of Yisrael. That we know that our Abba is just. He is, he is righteous. He is sadiq. And those that he commands to watch over his flock then we must feed them with knowledge of what the Nobi has expressed, the Shulish Ach, and the one that journeys through the line. He has no place he calls his own. He's not bound by anything at all. He's not tied to anything at all. He has no children, no wife, or, or no set place. His life, he is a true Nazarite's Antiyah. His life is an offering unto Yah. He has abandoned everything because he knows that there, is a riches, there are riches that are greater than what he sees on this side of the earth. If we have hope only or tikva only in this life, then we have all men most miserable. And this is where the tikva of man lies in this life. Here. And then he raises up among the house of Yisrael, 
those that are precise, those that have a spiritual intellect, that he calls his Murray the teacher. And they teach the profoundness by syllables and by prefix and suffix, here a little and there a little, that it becomes a tremendous part of our genetic structure. That we can truly serve Yah with all, with whole, all of our love, all of our mind, and all of our strength. We truly serve him. And that's a great delight. So that must be done among the house of Yisrael. We've come through one of the most beautiful times of Yah's time in his calendar. His Kodesh, Kodesh, his time frame of time. We know that Yah operates according to the preciseness of his time. Zazachin Yaramaya, he brought out to us that one day is as a thousand years. His Khefa spoke so profoundly. And a thousand years is as one day with Almighty Yah. And everything is precisely calculated to the measure of his time. Not to the measure of our time. Because we are a people that's very impatient. We don't see the seasons or the mikra, the time of the season unto Yah, that it should cause us to rejoice greatly as we understand the climactic end of what things shall be. And all of this is for a profound purpose. As we can see throughout the Chadve, the number should be E7, it indicates not only the perfection of Yah, but the perfection of his order, the perfect judgment, the perfect end. Because after the Shabi'i is the new day, Shemini, the eighth day or the day of beginning, new beginning. So he brought us through this period of time to make sure that our eyes are focused on what the Torah and what the Nabi says. What has been written in the book, that even the practice of this event gives us greater insight. And as we see the insight, we delight even the more. They have begun for the pagan occasion of Xmas, even before the weather change, they were putting the trees out. Last month, they're preparing the minds of the people, the jingle bells, and all of their events that leads up Unto this most venerable, corrupt, vile, idolatrous time that's based in this nation and the nations of the earth. It is one of the most corrupt events upon the face of the earth. And Yah gives us time to prepare ourselves as we, from this day forth, we began to plant the barley. Because the barley was the most significant grain among Yisra'ya, the wheat, it was a lesser thing. But it was the barley, Yisra'ya, that we prepare our hearts that in the beginning of this year, we began to see the growth of the leaves of the barley. And when you began to see the leaves of any plant, you can determine what is needed, uh, that it will come to its fullest of fruition, that it will produce fruit abundantly much and that shall be significant uh, to put into the storehouse. Uh, and in times of great calamity, there shall be much for the need of Yisrael to be met. And that, what it must be in our bosom, Yisrael, it is not a time that we simply serenade through it and just think of it as something that is not of great significance. But it is of grave significance to our growth and to our maturity in the ways of Yah and the things of Yah. It is like the pagan holiday that they will say it's not what you give, but it's the heart that you give it out of. Would I tell you what? You let someone give you a gift that is quite expensive 
and you do not reciprocate that back to them and watch their actions and their attitude. Watch that if it's not. And here Yah has given us the greatest gift beyond our comprehension. Now what do we reward him with for this great gift that he has granted? That's why we need the messengers. They must speak according to the precepts and the concepts of Omariyam. That's why it's not the most excellent thing for us as a nation of people that we carve out our own little conclaves uh, and we abandon ourselves from the body of Yisrael. My heart aches for the fellowship of Yah's people. And I go beyond reaching out more than these men reach out to me. You all just do not know. You understand. I go beyond even my physical beings and even my substance. Yet the enemy has created this divide. It's subtle, it's slick. Trust no man. I will, my friend. I was thinking about that this morning. I say, yeah, it is dismal, isn't it? That those that identify the new moon by not seeing the moon, they trust in astrology, they trust in the calculation of man, but yet they say, you trust in no man. And those that design the Shabbat around what they call the lunar Shabbat, they have no ability to detect when the new moon appears in the sky. That's why Yah gave us a sun, a crescent, that we will know that it is the new moon, Yisrael. And yet they will tell you not to trust the messenger of Yah. There is a sure sign concerning those that are ordained of Yah by the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. And you will know, I want to identify that because uh, it is vital that we understand what events that have transpired. Let me read. A little letter here. It is very important. I want to read this and I will begin teaching today. It says, Dear Pastor Roberts, I, I will read it the way the person who wrote this letter. For over 30 years, now this is not the one I wanted. There was a letter that this Uchot wrote me that for all of her life, and because of the diseases that incapacitate her, she has not been able to fast. And this was the first year she was able on Yom Kippur to fast with us. And there was no sickness, no repercussion, no anything in her body. And she concluded the letter that, I will support you, my Ach. And I barak ya for the great blessings that you have granted. Ak Simeon, see if you can find that letter. It's from our sister from the island of Granada, Sister Joyce. I think it came to Voice of Victory. I want to begin teaching here today. It's vital that I teach this in its simplest form. And there's a reason I want to teach this. Because there is a commandment that says, remember Zachar. Zachar, remember, Hashemat. It tells us here to remember to Zachar, the Shabbat. All of these commandments on the first table and the second table, it takes nothing to perform them but obedience. He did not ordain the Shabbat that it would take a scholarly mind to understand when the Shabbat was. That's why he told them to Zachar. To retain, to remember, to make it a zigron, a memory in your mind. That you pass it down through each generation. And yet this is one whereby the scurrilous powers of hell. Uh, that these damnable lunatics that call themselves lunar Sabbatarians. Uh, they are lunish as hell. And I'm going to teach on that. I wanted to this morning, but I will not. I want to bring the closure on this great activity that we have been a part of. With these damnable lunatarians, these false individuals uh, that spew the pausing of this damnable doctrine of lies and deceit. 
He simply said, remember. Does it take much to remember? You should not steal or you should not kill. Thou should not covet. It doesn't take much to perform in that. They all are equal, Yisra'ya. This is the first greatest commandment that we love Yah with all. I show you one that is like unto that. That we love our re'a, re'a, our neighbor, as we love ourselves. And yet there are many that are being deceived through the demise of this damnable doctrine. I received the letter this morning and also a telephone call, one in desperation. How that one has entered into the congregation among the sheep. And now they are devouring and scattering the people with this damnable Lunatarian, lunatic doctrine. I will assault it in the space of y'all's time and the time to come with a great assault. With a great assault. There is no commonality between them. There is no unanimity be between them. Their doctrine is a damn lie. The lunar doctrine is a damn lie. But that's not what I want to teach you today. I want you to turn your attention to the book of Yeshua, the Norbi, Isaiah. In chapter 8, and I want to read quickly verse 17. The measure of Yah's affection toward his people, that we will not be seduced by even doctrines and deception of lies of this kind of corruption. He speaks to the Nobi concerning uh, the condition of Yisrael, their state of mind, what well, things are seducing them, that he may direct their attention to one thing, that they will know the true messengers of Almighty Yah. It says in verse 17, and I will, uh, I will tarry our haqqa, not just wait, but one haqqa, it waits with a deliberate uh, patience on Yah. What is not impatient, one does not become discouraged. One doesn't come disillusion, Allah. We must wait upon Yah that hides his face from Bayat Yaqob. He has hid his face from those us because we are a nation that's trying to supplant Torah. That's why we're walking in all kinds of ritualism. That's why we're calling out to all kinds of spirits and demonic powers. So Yah has hidden his ponim, his presence from Yisrael. Yah, we are a people of supplanting. We're always trying to supplant Yah. We're always trying to define things by our own expression. We take our lotion, our law, L-A-W, shon, S-H-O-N-E, our lotion, and this is thing that shuns the law. It shuns the Torah of Yah. And we have become supplanters in our own right. We have supplanted Torah with our own delusion, with our emotions. And this is what Jacob represents here, that he is the supplanter. He did not say Yisra'ya, but we know that Jacob is Yisra'ya. We have become the supplanters. And it said, and I will have, I will look. For him. And to kava is not just to go out and look. But the kava of Yah. It is, a, it is an eagerness. You are an egotistical maniac when it comes to Yah. Our minds are so indulged with Torah that we look. Our, eye in, our eyes are upon the things that are above. That's why Yahshua said look up. If our redemption draws night. It draws closer. We must eagerly look for him. We must eagerly with great anticipation. And that is what the feast days represent. At the sound of the last shufa, then the dead in your shuch hamashiach shall rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him in Hashem Hayam. And there shall they be with him forever. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking for. Yes, will I be one that is alive when he comes, when Yeshua comes. Hallelujah. He says in verse 18, Yah says, Behold, I am the children whom Yahweh has given me, who has given me the guidance and the instruction 
to bring them into the Musa, the Musa, the instructions, uh, the disciplines of Yah, the correction of Yah, that our attitude will be shaped and our minds uh, will be shaped according uh, to two of the most powerful things that Yah has given me uh, for signs and wonder among the whole house, Bayat Yisrael. From Yah of Sava, which dwelleth, he lives in Hatizayan, he dwelleth uh, in Yerushalayim. Verse 19. And when the people shall, shall say to you, messenger, the Nobi, uh, when they shall say to you, uh, will you inquire to seek for us that or those uh, which have an ub, a familiar spirit, ub, the ghost. That's what ub is. I want to show us something. And this is what has been done among the people of Yom. That's why this damnable Holy Ghost rejected. He said that have the ability uh, the, uh, to seek that which is of the dead uh, through the power of necromancing. Uh, that you began to operate in the spirit of a shaman. You began to cry out to the demons and the powers that be uh, and seek that which is of the same familiar spirit that we are in. We know that we were once dead and trespassed in our sins. I want to show you the correlation. And what we do, Yisrael, when we are indulged in our own wickedness and our sins, we seek those that are of uh, a familiar spirit of Ub, who have an unclean spirit, who, who will do the same kind of necromancing uh, and speaking to the ghosts and the powers of darkness uh, that you desire. That's why you seek them out. That's why you seek out their fellowship, and that's why you seek out their, their camaraderie, Israel. So they say to the Nobi, find us one. Seek out those, that thing that is of our same nature, that is of the same corruption that we are of. I could open this house to all kinds of doctrines, never dealing with the corruption of Yah's people. And they will come far and near. But I will not do that. I will not do that. And I pray the strength of your rests upon all of the messengers and those that are here that if he removes me, you will not capitulate. Because if you do, it will come down to the gates of hell. I will not sell him out for the fact of fellowship. Where two or three are gathered, I'd rather have that. Your shall be in the midst, there shall he also be in the midst. If two or three gather in his name, in his Hashem, there shall he also be among that people. And his name is a Kadosh name, he is Kodash. You cannot have the folly and the frivolity uh, and the foolishness for the sake of an assembly and the numeric uh, uh, identity uh, to say that you have accomplished something. I can't do anything. Everything that I do is through your sure. If the power of that is not among us, uh, what I do, it doesn't mean a damn thing. It is of no substance, no value at all, Yisrael. So seek unto us. This time of the season is not to seek out familiar spirits of our nature. But it's to seek out the Ruach of Almighty Yah that empowers us. For the great time that is ahead, uh, the cultivation of the grounds, uh, or our lav, our labah, that we may bring forth uh, the green loaves or the appearing uh, at Yah's time, uh, a matzvah, Pesach, when is that time uh, to celebrate? Seek out them that are familiar spirits, and he says, I, uh, we also want those that are, you don't need, that are wizards. Those that cry out to the demons of darkness. And those that conjure up wicked things. And those that are wizards, they conjure up the things of the past. They're always drawing from the past and not the present truth of Almighty Yah. They're drawing from the spirits that, that have always kept them separated from others. That they have never been a part of others. They're always drawing from that wickedness. He said those that are of that kind of a spirit... That are wizards. Uh, and he said, and that uh, peep or 
Safaf. I just found out what that meant today. Safaf. I want to identify what it means. It means uh, the ghost. G-H-O-S-T. Is that ghost in our vernacular? The reason I want you to understand Safaf is I want to show you something a little further. And that he uses the word mutter, doesn't he? But we must understand what the word mutter is. Uh, it is chaga. Chaga. Those that groan and have these crazy gyrations. Have we not seen that in our lives? Have we not been a part of that? When they are seeking those spirits that are not of Yah, but of the gods of the damnable gods of the nations, we are seeing the, the flailing of arms and the, and the putrefied stench out of the mouths of the people and the foams that flow out of their mouths and the gurgitation and vomit. You tell me that's Yah? There's no one in the book that that was performed. On the day of Shauva, they did not puke like dogs. When the Ruach of Yah came in, the, the power of his Ruach, they began to speak in the languages of those that had come from every part of the earth. To hear the wonderful works of Yahshua HaMashiach. They did not speak in groanings and sounds that were undetectable or that the ears could not discern what they were. These vile houses have sought out spirits and wizards uh, and all of these kinds of damnable things uh, and the ghosts and the things uh, that are the hidden world. And so that's why the people are acting the way they're acting. They're mutters, they're making groaning sounds uh, that cannot be understood by the intellect of ears. On the day of Shauva, they understood the words that they spoke. Because they all spoke in the language of those that were there. And they understood the excellence of Yah's Torah Yisraya. And this generation they're seeking out mutters and peepers. And those that growl. And they roar like lions. And they make these grotesque sounds like this vile thing of the Hagans and all of them. This laughing demonic power. And they're barking like dogs. And they're making sounds like lions and all of that. This is the spirit of of idolatry and the people's Yah says uh, that's why the Nobi speaks here that Yisraya I will not seek that for you uh, I will not inquire of those kinds of things uh, and yet the people are pressing in to that direction and those kinds of places are filled today and tomorrow the doors will burst at the seams of those vile houses uh, of ill repute he said, they said, seek out mutter or chaga. Should not a people seek to Yah, their sovereign master, for the living, from the living, for the living uh, to the dead? Should not we seek Yah? Should not we desire the counsel of Yah? Yeah. And we know we desire that and we do what he commands us, don't we? Yeah. And we love him, we will do what Yah commands us, Yisrael. He commands his mu'adem to be kept, to be observed, uh, to be shema, to be guarded in our love. That they shall be zikron, a zikron, a delight. It shall be something that is ingrained in our minds uh, for olam viat forever. That we teach our children, our sons and our daughters uh, that they may zakhar, remember. They may remember the seasons and the times of Yah. You teach them how to identify the sun. You don't have to be a mu me the moon. You don't have to be a moon watcher. There are people that are making the moon this form of a, and y'all warn us against that. It's a simple process. I will teach it and show you all. If you never hear me again or see me, you will know how to keep the more adem of Yah. You will know exactly when they are. It's not done by some calculation. They say, well, the book of Yeshai and the book of Jubilee, you don't even understand that. Some of the most prominent <clears throat> Prominent uh, astrologers don't even understand the very dynamics uh, of days and months and seasons uh, and the calculation of that. I've read tons of documents on it. They don't understand it. And yet with our two-penny mind, we think we understand it. You find people that are most ignorant, unlearned men. They don't even know a verb from an adjective in their own vernacular. And yet they are, they, they, are, they, they are the most knowledgeable individual. I don't take away from a man because he's ignorant. Uh, when a man speaks according to this, you will know he is of Yah. May I move further? In the next verse, he says to the Torah and to the Tiada or the testimony, the prophetic prophecy. 
That is what the tiada is, the prophetic utterance of Yah from the mouths of the messages. To the Torah and to the testimony, the tiada, if they speak not according to this word, if they do not speak to us according to the Torah, and the Edo, the testimony of Yah, of the prophetic words of Torah, which have been naba uttered, spoken, of the times, present, future, and distant. If they speak not of that, it is because there is no shakha, or no light, no awe, no power of the testimony of Yahshua in them. So you cannot speak of the former things and not realize the value of that and say that only the present things are valuable. If one speak not according to the Torah, if one speak not according to the testimony of Yah's power, and the Sha'a is the rising of the morning brightness. We arise when his Torah rises in our bosom. It brings brightness and light to us. And if one speaks not according to that, it is because there is no awe, no light, no Sha'a, no Sha'a in them at all. There's no brightness of Yahshua rising in them. There's no power of Yah's light rising in their bosom, Yisra'ya. None whatsoever. None at all. And so that's what the season of this time is all about. That we understand that which is the sha'a of that which is tinada. Uh, that which shall come. The prophecy. It shall be. We know he's going to come at this season. At this time. At the close of his time. He's coming. The sound of the last shofar. And at the end of this feast, there was the sound of the shofar, the voice cries. Gather my people, he shall send forth the Melechim to separate the wheat from the tear, to gather his people for the great in gathering, that there will be meat in his storehouse, that his bosom, his heart will look at the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, 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 the capturing or the resurrection of his people, and that will be his testimony. That's the testimony of Yah. We shall testify of his power. We don't understand the value of this. And we testify of his power when we guard the Mo'adim. We keep the feast days of Yah, just like he said it. We don't alter that at all. You don't just go out and start planting a garden today, do you? You got to plow, you got to till. You got to make prep. So we don't get ready for Sukkoth uh, two weeks before it comes. We began now. You get ready now. You prepare yourself. You prepare you in your mind your sukhats. You do that now. And so we began to do that at the end of this. Uh, before the new year comes in. Uh, we will see the greenness of the richness uh, of our desire and the passion in our hearts. Uh, you see that. You see the green lows of the barley. You see the ears of the barley. You know that we're prepared. So Pesach uh, and Masva is a great excitement for us. Why? Because we look uh, for the Yah's time that is ahead. That's how we do it. That's how we do it, Yisra'ya. There are those that will prepare for family reunions from one year to the other. And parties and all that, birthday parties. Uh, and Christmas. When do they begin to prepare for Christmas? Two months away? They start right after the day after. When they have everything on sale. There are people that will buy paper and buy all of those buy gifts the day after. That's the biggest day. That's when, the, that's when most businesses... Uh, that that's when they make money. They go to day after. Until the first of the year they have those after Christmas sale. They prepare for that the day after. Mama trying to pay debt off their credit cards uh, for next year. They do all they can to get it paid because they want to prepare. That they may do the same thing again. That's why we must kun, make preparation, kun, prepare our love. And the only way you must have the Torah and the testimony. If you don't have the Torah, the Torah testify of this time. The Torah testify of the portness of this, what the revelation of Yahshua will reveal how valuable and how beautiful this time is. It does not become something that is platonic, an act that we do and there is no great affection and love for it. It has to be a great affection and a great love for it. It's amazing that people have no regard for Yasmo Adem. None. Yah commands us what to do. 
So when we hear the emet of Yah, we cannot go back and say, well, uh, I, I get it right next year. No, you do it. You do it now. Now, now is the acceptable time of Yah. You don't want to use you began right now. I prepare my mind, myself, uh, and my readiness for the next one. You understand? He means what he says. Uh, he means what he says. When he says, this is a more dim unto Yah, does he mean that? When he means thou shalt not murder, does he mean that? Sure he means that, Yisrael. Every word he says is pure. We just don't have the spiritual revelation of it. And it comes to the power of the testimony of the Torah and the testimony. We need, we need that, Yisrael. I want to show you the power of that. That's why, is this or the Moadim of Yah, they're not part of the Torah? Sure, they began in the Torah. Was that Yahshua the testimony of that? Is he not the fulfillment of, of these Moadim, the feast days? It's in the Torah. Quickly here in the book of Tehillim, Psalms 19. This is the effective power of Yah, Almighty Yahweh, and His Sadiq Torah. This is how His power is effective in us through the power of Torah. To Helium 19, verse 7, that we said, The Torah of Yah, it is to me. Is not the Torah of Yah complete? It's whole? Is it not perfect? He said, The Torah of Yah is to me. It is the sound document, it is the soundness of our bosom. We're not sound because we don't delight in meditating the Torah. The Torah commands us to shema, to keep the Moadim of Yah. The Torah commands us to keep the Shabbat and keep it Kadosh. It commands us to do that. So we know that the Torah of Yah, it is Tomim, it is complete, it is perfect. It does what it does, it does, it's true, but it turns, it changes, converting the nefesh. And that's what it does, it converts us. Was Yeshua not the Torah made flesh? Has it not converted us? Have we not turned from our wicked ways? Do we go out and practice the things that we once did? I don't, Yisrael. So the Torah converts us. It is the Torah of Yah. Yeshua and the Word was made flesh. And we have the beauty and the honor of Almighty Yah in the body of Yeshua. So it shoves, it converts us, it changes us, it turns us around from the destructive manner of our flesh. Hallelujah. Of the nephesh. And the eduth, or the witness of his ordinance, that's what his testimony, his eduth is. Uh, it is the witness of Yah's ordinance in our bosom, uh, and that we are complicit to what Yah commands us. And the testimony of Yah is sure. When you say the word Amen, you say, I'm sure, sure. You say not only sure, but faithfulness. When you say Amen, you say, I love Yah. When you say Amen, you say, it's a sure word, Yah. When you say Amen, you say, my imuna, my confidence, is in what you command me, Yah. That's what it implies. It has three principles to the word Amen. Not Amen, but Amen. It has three principles to it. And those are the three principles to that word, Yisra, Yah. That's what you concur when you say that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, and the testimony of the Erdos of Yah is sure, making wise the simple. He tells us that the Pikud or the statues, his ordinance of Yah, they are Yosha, they're upright, they're straightforward. He doesn't bend his ordinance. They are straight, Yisra'ya, and it calls the Lev or Shamach. And that is the rejoicing that is beyond one's ability to control by the flesh. Shamach the Lev for the mitzvah. The mitzvah, what is this to us? These are Yah's mitzvah. This is the code to Yah's wisdom uh, that we may understand the pikkut, uh, we may understand uh, his writings uh, with great wisdom and understanding. This is the code of wisdom. This is. That is what his mitzvah are. Oh, I know there's 613, but this is the principle of all 613. This is the principle. His Torah, his mitzvah, and the mitzvah, the commandments of Yah, the commandments of Yah, his commandment is pure. It is tohar. It has not been contaminated. It is clean. It is right. Why would he command us to remember the Shabbat and it is impure? Or that we should keep the Mo'adim. We should keep his feast days. It's not so, Yisrael. All of this is part of the climactic end. And I will get to that. I will show us something here, Yisrael. It is pure. It is sincere. It is not 
captivated with vileness, enlightening the ayin. That's what his commandment, the Mitzvah, does. It enlightens our ability to see. It opens up our ayin that we have spiritual and mental perception of the ways of Yah. We have knowledge in the ordinance and the order of Yah. But because we don't see the ba or the purity of Yah's commandments, that's also one of the ways you enunciate the word pure ba, like a bar, B-A-R. Look at what the world call a bar here in America. One of the most vilest things, isn't it? You see how the enemy have tried to captivate the minds of people. You spell the word pure bar, just like you spell a bar room brawl, B-A-R. And you see how the enemy has taken from the Hebrew, especially in this language, and corrupt it, and corrupt it. And yet they could say, that is pure. And Yah says, uh, when it is bar, it is pure, it is clean, it is empty. And all in a place like that is some of the most vile spirits, isn't it? Some of the most corrupt things take place there. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's why this language is one of the most corrupt and one of the most vilest of languages. It plays on the minds of the people by the spirit of Shekha. It lies to you. This language lies to us. But the language of Yah never lies to us. It never lies to us. But this language lied to us. It lies to us because of the way that man has corrupted it for his own gain. His Torah, his Torah is Tomim, is perfect. It's perfect. And the Torah, the first five books of the Tanakh, it teaches us to keep the Mo'adim of Yah. And we must keep that Yisra'el. Yeah, why? Because it is vitally important for us to understand the, the power and the measure of Yahshua HaMashiach. And as we gather in times like this, uh, we understand the beauty of what he has done for Yisra'el. Yeah. We can see it more clearer. Yeah. It becomes integrated in our lives. It's become an important thing. You tell me Christmas is not important to the world? Yeah. You tell me Easter is not important? You tell me this whole day that we will have here only in this nation, Thanksgiving, you tell me it's not important? They will travel by the tens of millions on that day to eat hog chitlins and hog heads, everything that is unclean, to get drunk, to be drunk with wine. That's what they do, and you know that's what they do. Yet when it comes to Yah's gathering, uh, we will not gather to become drunk in the Ruach of Yah, to be overtaken by the power of the Ruach HaChodesh. We don't consider that. And so what we have is a little, uh, a little splitter group of people, a few here, a few there, a few there, and they all got their own self-righteousness. Uh, and everything that they're doing is, is a self, uh, it is a self-indulgent uh, of an activity. It's one thing we gather in the name of Yah, it's always the cleansing. He makes himself known by his judgment. He always judges us. He judges us to show us what we are, who we are. And then he can proceed from there. If we're ever in any gathering, there's the Ruach of judging, then Yah is not in the midst of there. He makes himself known by his judgment. And he judges us. I don't care who the man is. If he teaches and you don't have a sense of judgment, of judgment or the Mishpatim of Yah, that you're not corrected. Something is wrong. That's why the vile ones can sit in these whole houses and they have no sense of judgment. That's why those people down there in Lithonia, Georgia, can let a man that they know is a proven faggot that raped these boys, a damnable twisted pedophile, and then they will all gather back there by the thousands because they have the same fag, dyke, wicked dog of a spirit. They can sit and they know that this man is committing adultery with every woman there is. He's crawling all over them. And the reason they, there's no conviction because of the man taught that he will be damned. And he doesn't want to be damned. So he gave them this, uh, this, this feel of great, uh, they perceive, uh, that they can just do their little thing and go their way and do their thing. That's what he does. But when the power of Yah is in the midst, there's the Ruach of Judgment. He judges like this, no me, yes, scale. I'm not going to seek the, the peepers and the mutters for you. I'm not going after those idolatrous practices. In the Baptist house or the Methodist or the Pentecostals. Seventh-day Adventists, I'm not going to incorporate that in the ways of Yah. I'm not going to do that. We're going to do what the Torah, we're going to speak from the Torah and the testimony. Because the light of your shoe is my witness. And we know that that is our witness because we guard the Shabbat. We guard the, the more dim of Yah, Yisra'ya. 
It's vital to do that. Now, y'all did not tell you to have a convocation of baptism. So he did not tell you to have a seven-day convocation. He gave us his, his, his zigrons. This most damnable, irreproved thing called the Church of God in Christ, uh, they will have their convocation, 25, 30,000 come. They make the cities rich. They come and bring, and they bring money to the coffers of the cities. And y'all said, this is the time of you, you should not come empty, no man. Uh, you bring a gift, you bring an offer, you bring something to y'all. That's what he commands us. Uh, and yet they will go to these cities and make the cities rich. The governors, the mayors will greet them. Because they're going to bring revenue to the city. The hotel, they're banqueting. Uh, they're eating like pigs uh, and eating the swine meat. Uh, we gather to eat the Torah of Yah. We want the Torah and the testimony of Yah. Because we have not that there is no light in us at all. Uh, none. And that is what this time is for, to reflect and to shout upon the Torah of Yah, to shout upon the testimony of Yah, that we will witness of the light of Yahshua in us. That's what it's for, Yisra, Yah. It's vital that we gather. It's vital. That's why they all came to Yerushalayim. Well, I keep it in my house. That's not what Yah wants. Hell, you never get out of your house. He wants you to gather with Yisra, Yah. We shall know of another place that could accommodate the few of us. We will go. But I don't know of another place. We'll accommodate the people when they come here. We'll accommodate them in all kinds of ways. In their juvenile, petty ways. They're, yes, we do. Complaining, they're murmuring. Their selfish ways. Their lazy ways. Come on. I don't know any other place. And if you're listening, you know of a place, let me know. Tell me. Don't tell me about Pennsylvania. They don't like me up there. The ones that do know me. Don't tell me down there. I will not go to a dog like Israel Hawkins. Don't tell me down there. The landscape is not like this. It's not as beautiful. It is not as accommodating. I've seen pictures of that place. So don't tell me that. Tell me of a place. Please. Tell me of one place. Tell me of one. Just one place, all right? We should be in a place where we're separated from the world. We should not be a part. We should not have to go to their the, 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 the restaurants and eat the damn swine meat. Yeah. I heard one says that something is wrong with you. You go to a restaurant, you know it serves swine. Well, damn, every restaurant serves pig meat. There's something unclean. Show me one that doesn't. Show me one restaurant that doesn't serve uh, shrimp or lobster or shrimp or, or some kind of unclean meat. Please show me one. Show me one that doesn't use unclean ingredients in the food. And that's what this world is doing. That's what we as a nation, we have, uh, we have incorporated ourselves with the world. It is so unclean that we're taking unclean things and trying to bring them into the ways of Yah. It's wrong, Yisrael Yah. We're trying to satisfy emotions of people, uh, relatives, kin folks. Uh, hell, we'll jump, over, we'll jump over 10 barrels for them. But when it comes to Yahweh, we won't do a thing. We'll jump over all kind of hoops for them. I will, my friend. Well, this is my little niece. Well, she's been a whore. Let her be a little whore. We gonna keep little Rodney Rume. No, let, let, let her find someone else to keep little Rodney Rume. We don't want to do that, Yisraya. Because we think every little thing is precious. And Yah, as this man read, he's gonna dash the babies, the tough. He's gonna kill them. He's gonna destroy them. You understand, Yisraya? You, you're not gonna transform anyone. You haven't been converted. We haven't been converted. This is a season that should convert us. How are you going to convert someone? You haven't done an excellent job in converting you. You don't look that converted. Come on, Yisrael. Yeah, we got to take, that's what this season is for. That we take a stand for, stance for Yah. And we take it solidly. You understand? Hallelujah. We got excellent talk, but there's no substance to our talk. In my days, they would say, you got, a, you got an excellent game, but they, they ain't nothing to you, boy. You all talk, you all mouth, but, but boy, they ain't nothing to you. 
And that's what we had. We got a lot of talk. We brought a lot of this worldly emphasis in with the ways of Yah. And it's wrong. Man must speak by the Torah and the testimony of Yah and Yahshua. If he doesn't speak that way, there's nothing in him. If he doesn't speak that way, he's calling on, he's using the spirit of necromancy. He's using the Holy Ghost. He's using the powers of hell. You can call on your damn Jesus all you want to. I'm not going to stop talking like that. I'm not, Yisraya. I'm not going to compromise with that. I'm not going to integrate myself with that kind of fellowship. I'm not going to do it. How in the hell do you call yourself a Hebrew? You have a Hebraic name, and you're calling on a Latin Greek name. The Latin do not call on, a, uh, call on an English god. The Ethiopians don't call on a god that's named after an English thing or English god. They call on one after their own kind. Yet these pack of hypocrites in this nation... They call themselves Hebrews of the genetic type. Yah said he would scatter his people to the four winds of the earth. They're not just in the Americas. Uh, they're equal throughout the world, Yisrael. His remnant is equal throughout the world. That's why the enemy is trying to find them. It's a damn lie. It's a lie from hell. They would change their names. They would give their daughters that name, their sons. Uh, and yet they call on a damn English God. It's a lie from hell. It's a damn lie. It's corrupt and it's phony. It's corrupt and it's phony. The Koreans do not call on a God that has an English name. The Japanese do not call on a God that has an English name. The Indians do not, in all of the Brahma, in all of the 300 gods, not one has a name that is known as an English name. And we're supposed to be the people of the book, Hebrews. They're not Hebrews. And that's a fact. You can be a Jew or whatever all you want to. It doesn't mean a damn thing to Yah. And many of the traditions we have uh, allow what we call Judaism. Uh, we have integrated ourselves into their principles. Uh, and we're trying to teach the same thing. It's not so. Judaism is no different than Christianity. It's a damnable false religion. He commanded his people a way of instruction and a way of life. That's what the Torah does. It teaches us a way to live before Yah. Judaism doesn't do that. Christianity doesn't do that. Hinduism doesn't do that. Buddhism doesn't do that. That's what it's all about. It is a transforming experience. It is an enlightenment. You don't get that by breathing or your, your ability to control your breath or, or abstaining from this meat or that meat. It comes through the enlightenment and the power of Yahshua. It comes through that testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. That he is real in your bosom and your heart. That's what it comes through. It's not going to come any other way. It must come that way, Yisraya. You're not going to find it any other way. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in the book of Yokohana and John, I want to move quickly. This when Yochahan was he was immersing in Yahshua. I want you to hear his testimony. Yochahan 3 verse 31. He says that he that come from above is above all. Did Yahshua come from above? He is above all. And he that is in the earth is earthly. Was he in the earth? Sure he was. Although we are earthly vessels... We have come from above because our mind or our mindset has come from above. It is the power to transform us. And speaks of the earth. And he that comes from the heaven is above. And what he has seen and heard, that he testified. Do you testify of what you've seen from Yah? See, our testimony is earthly. Your sure came from above, we're seeing an earthly vessel. Was his body an earthly vessel? You know it was, Yisrael. But because he had the edut of Yah, his testimony was on the things that are above. What is our testimony about? We get them out of Yahshua, our testimony will be on the mind, on the, we'll testify the things that are above. And if we mind earthly things, uh, 
If I mind my earthly things because we're carnal. And to be carnal minded is to be in enmity against Almighty Yahweh because uh, it cannot, it will not, uh, it cannot discern nor receive the things of the Torah that are spiritual. He was in an earthly vessel, but his mind was from above, Yisraya. We cannot mind the earthly things. Our minds must be set upon things that are above. We must put no thought. Put our mind, put on the things that are above and not on the things that are earthly. And what he has seen and heard, that he testify, and no man receives his testimony. See, no man can receive this testimony. That's why there must be the power of his birth and the conversion. That's why there must be a teshuva. We must be transformed by the renewing of our mind, Yisraya. We must be. And that is what the seasons are for, to renew us, to invigorate us, and to make us realize how real this is. How important, how valuable it is. He that receives his testimony has set to his seal that Yah is true. If one speaks not of the Torah and the testimony, if we don't receive the testimonies of Yah, if we don't engage in that testimony, then we say that he is not true. We receive the testimony, then we acknowledge that he is true. He testified to his people that these gatherings, these are the modem of Yah. The Shabbat, that you decease, you stop from all labor that Give strength to the flesh. You literally die on the Shabbat. That's what it means. It's a day of death. Nothing that is accommodating. You just rest. He that received the testimony has said to his seal that Yah is true. For he whom Yahweh has sent speaks the word of Almighty Yahweh. For Yahweh gave not unto Yahshua, he gave not the Ruach uh, by measurement. He did not uh, limit the power of the Ruach by some little small incremental uh, proposal unto him. He gave him the Ruach without measure. Hallelujah. And if we have the Ruach among us, it is without measure. Hallelujah. We should be filled with the Ruach of Yah. Hallelujah. And when we're filled with the Ruach of Yah, then we receive the testimony of Yah, Almighty Yah. And that testimony of the Torah, his testimony, it brings light. It calls the light of Yahshua to shine greatly in our bosom. It calls us to speak of the wonder of his mighty works. And the gatherings of Yah, where people gather, they want to dispute doctrine. Want to dispute a word or dispute that. When he should be speaking of the mighty works of Yah and his mighty power that he had wrought among the people of Yisrael. That he has strengthened them in a great way, in a mighty way. That's what it should be about, Yisra'ya. Same like Yokohan. And we have this testimony in us. We have set the seal that Yah is true. And we don't have the power of Yahshua in us, that testimony. We have said that Yah is not true, Yisra'ya. Not Jesus, but Yahshua. He came in his Father's name. That's the fact. You can denounce it, you can play with it all you want to, to our own destruction. There's only one name given unto man whereby we must be saved. It's not the name of Jesus. It's not the name of Jesus. We have finagled, we have played the role of damn fools, all of us. One time he winked at our ignorance. Now he calls us all to repent. He said, repent of your actions and your ways. Uh, repent of those deeds that you have done. We must repent. You can't compromise with that. You can't say, well, I don't know, you can't compromise with it. Hallelujah. There's only one name. Hallelujah. There's only one name that must be on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He commands us in the book in Tehillim 68, he tells us his name. And to praise his name. He commands us. He's not a damn God. Hallelujah. Damn these filthy gods. They're all dirty and doggish and filthy. He's not a damn Lord. A Baal. He's not that. I won't repent. He can kill me today. I won't repent of that one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shaul speaks unto the gathering that Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. 
And he makes this thing so simple to them. 1 Corinthians 2.1. That's he preached to them. The power of this death or the impaling of Yeshua HaMashiach. It says in 1 Corinthians 2.1. And I, he identifies himself. He says, you my Yisraelite brothers, or Ach, what I came to you came not with excellence of speech or of the hukma of the wisdom. He said, I came unto you declaring to you the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's what the Caesar and the Moadim represent, the testimony of Yahshua. We can see the power of all that fulfilled in Yahshua. He said, I came uh, declaring to you the testimony of Yahshua. I did not show you any of my intellectual capacity. I didn't show you my skill training. I came to show you the power of the eduth of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. The witness of him in me. The witness of his power. The witness of his life. Uh, the witness of his truth. Uh, because I'm sealed with that testimony. And that testimony identified to you that Yah is true. He is true. There is no lie in him. And what he says is the truth, Yisraya. The only way we can know, the, can know that is through your sure. You can't know that any other way, Yisraya. He said, for I determined not to know anything among you, save your sure Hamashiach and the power of his death. I did not come to debate you in the diversity or different aspects of Torah. I came to show you and testify of the power of Yahshua and his death. That is what these gatherings represent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to press beyond your flesh and your limitations. Hallelujah. You got to press beyond the circumstances that prevent you, Yisraya. He said three times a year, all men gather. All men, the sons, uh, they come to Yerushalayim and gather. Three times a year. He said, Matzvah, Sha'uvat, and Tabernacle, they should come and gather sukkah. They didn't leave their wives at home, they brought them along. They brought their children, they journeyed for days to get there. They gathered in the place where his shalom was taught, where his name was. We gathered together in Yahshua HaMashiach, in the testimony of Yahshua. That's where we gather in. I'll go anywhere and debate your doctrine. And I will not agree to disagree, I just disagree with you. I said to one, no, we just disagree. I will not disagree to disagree. That's a cowardly way out. I flat out disagree with you. You don't have to worry about me disagreeing to agree to disagree. No, I disagree with you. That's it. We don't concur on this matter. But if you have the testimony of your sure, we concur on that matter. Hallelujah. As long as you got that, you got that testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. I know you're sealed, hallelujah. Oh, your light may be weak, but it will be a light. It will be a light. You will desire more and more. As the old woman said, I want, I want to go deeper and to deeper and deeper and to deeper depths and higher heights. You want to go that far, Yisrael, hallelujah. He said, that's all I had declared un that unto you and the power of his death. He said, and I was with you in weakness. Come on, there are that come in weakness. They all that come in weakness don't understand. I've watched that on this last tabernacle. Those that were weak, those that were fragile, those that cannot endure for a season. He said, I came to you in Yahweh, I had fear. He said, I came to you in much trembling that you would reject me. Don't tell me what a man stand before the people of Yah. Come over this place with full you or somewhat tremble. I don't care how many times you do it. You're not used to doing it. He said, I came before you in trembling. He said, my speech and my preaching was not with beautiful or an oratorical skill of great enticing with enticing words of man's wisdom. I did not speak to you out of the sensual wisdom of man. He said, but by the demonstration of the ruach and of power. Because my testimony is evident. You have heard of me. You know who I am. You know whose feet I sat under. You know my strength, uh, and you see the demonstration of Yah's power in me through this testimony of Yahshua. That's what this gathering and the gatherings represents. Uh, you press me on all of your obstacles and all of your situations. Uh, 
So my preaching was not an enticing words, uh, but with demonstrating the power of the Ruach. Why? That your emona should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the co-ark of the power of Almighty Yah. He said that it should stand in the power of Yah. What? Did not Yah establish this time for us? Sure he did. So we stand in this truth of Almighty Yah, because it is of great value and great importance unto us. It's of great revelation. And as we began, after the events over, we began to ponder the activities. Uh, it began, began to bring a, a greater knowledge to us. We see the greater value of it. It must be like that. The same thing with the Shabbat. Hallelujah. I want to read this quickly. This is the letter I wanted to read. Yabarak, you that have joined us on the live stream. Wherever you are, we barak you in your Yeshua's name. I think it's a beautiful letter. It says, she says, I cannot began at here to tell you how much I'm comforted and refreshed. I am as I continue to listen to the broadcast. A young pastor relative was visiting us the other day and he stood before the computer screen and he asked me in wonderment, he said, who is this pastor? Who is this man preaching? And I responded, my pastor. I said, and I want you to learn from him. I am blessed, but I will have to sit and write you a letter. Tabernacle was restful and wonderful as we read, prayed, rejoiced, and ate. Let me tell you that for over 15 years, I have not been able to go hungry because of diabetes. I would feel blood ebbing from my palms and under my feet. Pastor, I fast for young Kimpura with no hint of danger to my health. 25 hours, I asked my Abba and he did it for me. She says, the choir, oh, the singing, oh, more than conqueror. A whole Raphael, I am amazed at all the songs. I've been posting the songs of the choir on my Facebook page before I found your preaching. Before she heard the preaching, a lot of people found the singing and a lot of incidents before they find the preaching. That song she's saying, I don't know, it's probably 11, 12,000, 15, 16,000 people. Yeah. There are those I go to places and I open up something, I say, okay, listen to that. Just other day. And they take the singing. That's why I've always tried to have those that were leading this, that it must be a pure voice of singing. You, we can get up and sing all day long. The Baptists do that. The Methodist. But it has to be from the heart. It has to have meaning. You don't have to practice to sing. You don't need altos and sopranos. And bass. Just sing. And some people it's difficult. To, that's the worldly way of doing it. There are people that have unique voices. That is not of an alto or soprano. They have unique voices. And they sing in a way that is just so different. And so when you try to corral that, you lose the beauty of the phonics of all of the range of the rate of sounds that come. I don't believe in that mess. Just sing to the honor of Yah. Let them sing. Let them sing in the strength of that voice which uh, will bring beauty unto Yah. That's what the whole houses do. All right, alto. All right, a soprano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, bass. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, the man singing bass, well, he's not a bass. Huh? I don't have no bass voice. He's trying to sing soprano. He's not a soprano. They sing with a natural flow. There's nothing more beautiful than that. Just let it flow. Flow, Yisraya. Let it flow from your diaphragm. You don't alter your vocal cord. Just let it flow. And it will sound beautiful. That's how you sing. 
She said, I want, she put this on her Facebook, I want young people to see the manner of dress for women and the head covering. I was a bit timid to do so at first. And I would go to hear the song again and again. So finally, I began to share this share, the preaching. I shared a, I shared a sermon message with someone, share one as well from, your, from the library. I'm very happy. I will support you in every way. And this is a promise. My beloved, my deepest love to you, Achot Rafea, and all the brethren, and all the Achot Atechua community, Ima Joyce. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Never met us. We pray that you grant her opportunity to come. Yeah. She's an educator there in the island of, uh, of Granada. Hallelujah. She's getting older, and that's, that's so beautiful. Hallelujah. See that testimony, Yisraya? That's why it's important that you dress right, daughters. You got to show off your titty nipples. Your beauty is not showing off your body, showing off your backside, wearing something so tight, you're uncomfortable. That's not beauty. It's a mess. It's not wearing heels that high. That's stupid. It's not showing off your big legs. They're big. Just keep them big and keep them hid, all right? That's not what it's about. It's not painting your toenails and painting your fingernails and putting on earrings. Yah said he will put us on. He will, he will put the earrings on. Believe me. And his earrings are not like the trash you're going to put on, all right? He's going to put no earrings in the men's ears. He's going to put them in our nose. That's what he's going to do. He's going to do that in the kingdom. He's going to put it there. That's going to be his betrothed to us. That's gonna, he's going to put rings on us. He's going to show that we're married to us. Even the Hebrews, even the way the world does things, even they, you know, I used to wear my watch on the right wrist. On the, well, that's wrong to wear it that way. You wear it on the left. Who said it's wrong? Everything in this nation done to the left, isn't it? But everything of y'all done to the right, isn't it? Yeah, it y'all shows his right hand, isn't it? All right, everything is done. Everything. He never told us to put on wedding bands and stuff like that. He never told us that. But that's not even the way that Yisrael y'all did it. He, that's, a, that's a custom. I got a book that I've written on that. I'm going to post it one day. He never told us to do that. That, that, that wasn't a sign that one was married to one in Yisraya. It may have been a bangle or something like that. You see in other cultures where the nose, but everything was done to the right. It was not done to the left. Everything in this country. If I put my watch on the wrist, they'll think, well, what's wrong with him? That's the way we think. It's just the truth, Yisraya. He never told us to do that. No way. It's not even in the book. Nowhere, nowhere. Everything was down to his right. He says on the right hand of the Father. Everything is on the right. Everything, everything in this nation to the left hand. The man where he is on the left, the woman where her watch on the left. That wasn't so. I think that we as the nation of Israel, yeah, we should have something that uh, we can identify our Ishaw and they identify us. That's all right, but not the way the world does it, not the way in the eastern or the western hemisphere how they do it. Believe me, because you're dealing, I know because I've done the research over the many years, I've done it, I know what it's all about, yes, I am. And we have to be very careful that we are so, that which is highly esteemed among the world is an abomination to you. So everything that the world does that they esteem highly, you ought to know, don't even be a part of it. And I don't be a part of it, you understand? Hallelujah. He's going to put earrings on his men. He's going to put nose rings on us. He's going to put it in your bath that is I on. He's going to put that. He's going to put a crown, he's going to put gold on us. He's going to do it. I don't want this trash of the world. Let, let's wait till he do it. Hallelujah. And he's going to put them on. Yeah, you're going to have nose rings. You're going to have earrings and all of that. Huh? Hallelujah. He's going to do that. He said it. I got a teaching on that. And I'll show you what he said. He did not say you do it. He said I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So whatever the customs are in America, you know, don't do what they do. Just go directly from that. Hallelujah. 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 You go differently from that. If I had the monies... Everyone that is married, I would put a, bing, a bangle on every, the wife and the husband, his name on her and her name on her. But we wouldn't do it the way the world does it. Pure gold, though, I would not mess with the other trash. That's the way you do it. But not the way the world does it. You don't, you don't operate that way. Hallelujah. That's why we don't keep the feast days the way the world. There are many of those that kept this in Jesus' name and all that. They had hundreds of people to come. Believe me. Now, those that are in that name keep the feast days. But yet they do anything they want to. The women dress 
floozy and like Jezebels. It's a shame. And nobody says anything. Nobody. But I will not allow that here. I want to move on, Yisra. You turn quickly to Ibrahim, Hebrews. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Here's the reward to Yisrael. It says, as we operate in the same ruach of Enoch, Chanach, Shanach, even the Nobi speaks of the great power, he says here in Hebrews 11.5. He said, by Imuna, faith, Enoch, he will translate it, that he should not taste or see Muth or Mavith, death. And was not found. Why? Because Yah translated him. For before he was translated, he had this testimony. Before we can be translated into the power of the kingdom of Yah, we must have the testimony of the Torah and the testimony. He had this testimony that he pleased Yah. But without Imuna, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to Yah must believe that he is. And that Yah is a reward of them that Yatab, that diligently seek him. You understand the Yatab of Yah? We seek him with great gladness that our hearts are overwhelmed. That's a, great, uh, that's a great joy to gather, even during the feast days. That's a great delight. We must Yatab, Yatab, seek him with great delight, with great joy, with great earnestness of our bosom. He's a reward to them that please him. And that was his testimony. That he knew that he pleased Yah. That Yah should do all things to please Almighty Yah. So the sting of death had no power over him. O death, where is thy sting? Oh, the sting of death is sin. O death, where is your power? Where is your power to bring me under the yoke of the grave? He could, death could not do that. Death did not overpower that body. So we must have the testimony, yeah? That in your shoe, because he lived, we live. That is the power. We must have that light, Yisra'ah. Because he had this testimony that he pleased Yah. We must have the testimony to please Yah. We must have the testimony to please Almighty Yahweh. And without the testimony, there's no light in us at all. We have no light. We have no wisdom of Torah, none whatsoever. If they speak not according to the Torah and the testimony, it's because there's no light. Your shoe is not in them, Yisrael. We may be ignorant, and I know we are because I am, of many facets. But yet when we hear the truth, we cannot have disdain for it. We cannot reject it. We cannot fight against it. I don't care how it cuts us, how it reproves us. We cannot fight against that. We have been transformed by the renewing of our mind. We don't go the way of the world. We don't do the way... The things that they do, Yisrael. Yeah. We need this kind of testimony. Yeah. That we should not, death shall have no power over us. Yeah. And if we don't have this testimony, death will consume us and destroy us, Yisrael. Yeah. But we need this testimony, like Enoch had, yeah. like Hanak had, that we please Yah, that we please Almighty Yah, and that we diligently, Yatab, above all things, we seek Him with joy. We seek him with delight. We seek him with earnestness. We seek him with great pleasure. We seek him with singing and dancing. That's what Yatab is. It means to set our affection on him and seek him, uh, uh, Yisrael. I'm going to preach from the book of Gileana, Revelation here for a while before I close. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop early today. Yes, I am. 1.30, I'm done. Or before. Hallelujah. I want to preach here from, from Gilead now, Revelation. Revelation chapter 1. I want to show us, as I read in the beginning from Yeshaya, if they speak not according to the Torah and the testimony, it is because they have no light in them. Now here this one was on the Isle of Patmos waiting for the revelation of Yah. What book did he have? He did not have the book of Revelation. He did not have Gilyana. He did not have the book of Yachahan. But look what he says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. It says the revelation of the revealing of Yahshua HaMashiach. Which Yah gave to him. The revelation of Yahshua. Is Yah gave that to Yahshua. His revealed power. It was northern by Yah. For what? To show his. To show the servants of Yah. 
things which must shortly come to pass. Uh, well, does the testimony of Yah tells us the things that are shortly coming to pass? Sure they do. He could not write this revelation of Yahshua unless he understood the Torah. In order for him to understand the testimony of Yah, the light of Yah had to reveal him in a way that it was beyond his ability to comprehend. That's why he was in awe. The thing that must surely come to pass, and he said and signified it by his melak to his servant Yachahan, the messenger. That's what the melak is. He sent to reveal this unto Yachahan by the melak, the messenger that carried the wisdom from Yah's throne. Verse 2. Who bear record of the Torah, the word of Yah, and the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. The Melach had to bear witness of the Torah. And Yahshua. I hear men talk and say Yah spoke to them. And they never say that the word that came to him bear record of the Torah, the word, or the testimony of Yahshua. They will quote, quote, he said to me, I want you to do that and tell this sister to do that and tell this brother that. That's not Yah speaking. To these individuals. When this messenger came. The most profound thing that stood out above all things. He bare witness to the Torah. The Daba. The promises. The word of Yah. And then the testimony. If you do not have the Torah. The testimony. You don't even know the power. Of the testimony. Of the light of Yahshua Hamashiach. Who bare record of the word of Yah. And the testimony of Yahshua Hamashiach. And all things that he saw. Now he tells us. Bless is he that reads. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. The book that even was written before he wrote this book. Or this letter here. This is not a book. It is a letter. The prophecy consists of 66 books. That's what it consists of. Then read this prophecy and keep those things uh, which were written therein for the time is at hand. Does the Torah teach of the time at hand? Yeah. Does the testimony of Yah speaks of the time at hand? Yeah. When he grants unto us the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach in this writing of Gileana. And without the Torah and the testimony, he had no revelation of Yahshua. Yeah. And that's why the revelation of Yahshua is not visible in the lives of the people. That's why their witness or, the, or their testimony is, is a Jesus. And a Lord and a God. That's why their testimony is a Jesus. And a Lord and a God. And a, and a muttering and a groaning. And a ga 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 ga. It's not of Yah, Yisrael. It's not of Yah. That's why the seasons of Yah are always to bring Yisrael back. That the man will be strengthened. That's why all men. What is the man? One that has the Ruach of Yah. Yahshua is his head. They gathered in Yerushalayim. And the place where Yah Shalom was taught. You understand? And they were invigorated with the power of Yah when they went from that place. They understood the importance of the Sukkot. They understood the importance of the elements upon them, Yisra'iah. It shows us the very, the, the very traveling of Yisra'iah to be, to be remembered. And then as we remember that, we can see what Yah did for them. We understand it in a, in, in a personal testimony. That's why all that are Israelite born should sleep in a sukkah. That's what the Torah says. Bar line, bottom line. He means what he says. To give us the true perspective of whom he is, Yisrael. The messenger came to him, the Melak, with the Torah, the word, the Ba. That is his Daba. That is his word, his Torah. Hallelujah. That is his truth. His Sadiq is an everlasting Sadiq, and his Torah, his word, is Imat, is truth. That is his truth. And that's what the messenger had to come with. We as messengers, we must come with truth. We must speak truth. We must speak the pure word of Yah. Hallelujah. Because that's the only thing, in that word, we have the power of his testimony. And he testified that he was sending Yahshua HaMashiach to redeem us from the crutches of death and hell. From our own twisted nature, Yisra'ya. He testified of that. We must have that. 
You can have your Jesus talk, but it's not Torah talk. Hallelujah. That's the truth. I am amazed how these individuals say that they're Hebrews, and yet they call on Lord, God, Be'el, Jesus. It amazes me. And yet they have Hebrew names. They've changed their name to Yakahanan, Yeskel Israya. They don't say Israel, Yisra. They spell it the proper way. The children have Hebrew, Hebraic names, and yet they call on a damn pagan lie, a false lie. I was sitting with Zachin Yeshia Yeshirand uh, on yesterday, and he asked me, you have that 1611? I said, sure, the facsimile. You can get a 1611 KJV anywhere, but the facsimile is a different book. And those that call themselves Hebrews, they won't preach out of the Apocrypha. And those that call themselves that the only, only book is the KJV, well, let's go back to the 1611, where they identify Christmas and East and all of that damn mess. It's in it. All of this is a part of it. And these are the 1611 thumpers, you understand? Well, some of the mind has revisited that. Well, hell, they revisit the 1611. And these thumpers will not preach out of the Apocrypha. But it's in that one. I'm talking about the facsimile. And they will argue with the name Asus. Uh, well that, no, that's what it says. They didn't call Elisha Elisha. They called him Eli Zeus. 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 That is in the 1611. It is in that book. It's a fact. One day I'm going to teach from that. I'm going to teach the KJV, the original, 1611. And read it the way it said it. He was reading the way they, they were spelling words back then. He said, what? This is how they spell today? Come on, Yisraya. And these fools, that's what they are. If it's the 1611, it's the 1611. They have the 1611 revise. And probably the eighth edition of the revision of the 1611. There have been eight renditions and revisions of that book since the original 1611. You understand? And that's how ignorant they are. His name wasn't Jesus in that book. His name was not Jesus. Jesus is there. It's there. You can call it what you want to. It's there. That's the deception of man. He's going to always try to seek to change times and seasons and names. Hallelujah. Yeah. But it's one thing that Yah made them do. I didn't show him that. I'll show him. One thing. One thing they did do. And they did it for a novelty. They wrote his name there just like this. In the Hebrew. I will show you. I will show you where they tried to hide it. And yet in the latter part they reveal it. And if you look at it you will never notice it. You will never know it. But yet Yah made them put his name there. He made them write his name in Hebrew. He made them write his name in Hebrew. He made them write it there. I'll show you. It's there. And no I... When I bought this book 10 years ago, I remember looking because the man who sold me the book, he was an original supporter of the 1611. He said, this one, they're not even doing this anymore. It was by Nelson. He said, you won't find this. He said, I'll take $75. And when I get the money, if I sell it before you send the money, so I sent the money out because I had been looking. I couldn't find one. Overnight. You get that. How much will it cost to ship? You send it. I'll pay. I would have gave him 175 for that book. Because you can't find them. Hallelujah. I will show you. Let me move on a little bit. Revelation chapter, chapter, chapter 1 verse 9. I want you to see this now. Hallelujah. Blessed is he that read this book as I read in verse 3. Drop down to verse 9. Hallelujah. 
he declares unto us this profound revelation of Yah made unto him. I, Yakahan, who also am your, your, your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the Melkut, or the kingdom and patience of Yahshua HaMashiach, he said, I was in the hour that is called Patmos, for the word of Yah and for the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. That's why he was there. And that's why Yah will bring them to Yerushalayim for that, for the testimony they could collectively, that they all would hear the same words for the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. He said, I was in the Ruach on the Master's Day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of the shofar. And this is what Yahshua said, saying, I am a leaf, and I am tough, the first and the last. And what you see now, you write in a book. And send it to the seven congregations throughout Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Titeria, to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. I heard the voice of Yahshua speak to me mightily. And he said, I want you to write this in a book, in a letter. Well, these few pages of Gileana, you would not be classified what we would call a sefa, a book. Write it in a stroll. You write down what you see. And you send it unto the heads, unto the messengers of that assembly. That's what you do. That they may read and witness of the power of Yah's Torah in the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Because you're negated. You look at those assemblies, they were full of mess. They're in the book of Revelation. They were full of mess, just like Yah. He's saying they don't have the power of this testimony of Yahshua. And we need that, just like Yah. We need that. Let me show you this. This is the facsimile of the King's James, the 1611. This is what it is. You can get the Espin number. I don't know if you can find them. I can't find them. There are those that find 1611s. You can find 1611. But this is the original form it was written in. This is it right here. It's it. And it's one thing they, I want to show you something they miraculously did. Hallelujah. I want to show this arc here. Is there anything unusual about this page right here? Can you see anything? See, if you look too hard, you're not going to find anything. He's trying to find it. When I saw it, I didn't try to find it. I saw something amazing there. I'll show you. You see right there? You see right there? Right there? They put his name there. But I want to show you something. Hold up. Oh, see, look at him. I, I'm glad he said that. See, I'm glad he did that. Hallelujah. So he's going to question me now. He's saying, I, I don't see that. I see it. No, you didn't see it. No, you didn't. No, you saw some, you saw some print there. You see anything unusual about this page right here? All the Shalishams, all the 12, 12 tribes of Yisrael. Right there. See, they put his name. They put it plainly there. See that? They put his name right there. They wrote it. You see that? They put his name there. It's in this book. It's a Hebrew spelling. It's not an English. See right here? In the beginning of this book. See, they wrote it right there. They noticed that people would never look at that. They showed you half of it. And right there, they wrote it. Right there. See that? They put his name there. He has a name. Don't doubt about that. It's not God or Lord. That's why we gather the feast days. They put it right here in this. You have one of these, Mikaya? No, you don't have this. You have this book right here, Mikaya? You have a 1611? Okay, but it's not this one. Yeah. You don't have this one. You have a King James, but you don't have a 16 facsimile. I've tried to find them. I wish I could. It's the difference between the 1611 facsimile. It is the original print it is a 1611 original print, the same letters, the same writing. Let me show you. I know it's hard to read. See, in this book that you, you cannot find, they've spelled the word Christ, C-H-R-I-F-T. Criff. You will not find the name of Jesus in this book nowhere. I will show you. Asus, and you look up the word Asus, the gods, you will find that. This is what they wrote right here. If you look here, in the book of Matithiah, 
See how they spell he? Hen. H-E-N. No, that's right. Then was Jesus. See, no J. I don't care what they say. Jesus led by, up by the Spirit into the wilderness. They used gods and titles of gods for the names of men. It was one of the first things I noticed when I opened this book. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Eli Zeus, C-Z-E-U-S. See how they spell his name? Instead of Elishia, they knew what they were doing. And these same folks that hold to KJ 1611, they think they know what they don't know. This is a facsimile, a facsimile. You don't want a 1611, you want a facsimile. It's a difference between a 1611 and the origin, you want the origin. This is the facsimile original text. In modern text, original spelling, punctuation, and grammar, um, uh, original preface, and, uh, and translation to the reader. It is the original. You can't find them. If you find them, please let me know. It is the original 1611. Show me the name Jesus here anywhere. Show me the name, please. You can't find it. You're not going to find it. And they want to argue, well, there was no J. I know that's why you can never have a Jesus. You can never have a Jesus, liars. And you're not Hebrews. You're a bunch of phony, fake bakers. I don't take that back. I hope it gets some response. You understand? Hallelujah. Moving on here in the book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 6 verse 9. Hallelujah. This is when the fifth seal was opened on the book. No one could open the seal but Yoshua HaMashiach. And look what happens in the fifth seal. He said, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the nephesh of them that were slain for the Torah of the word of Yah and for the testimony which they held. They were slain because they were loyal to the Torah. Their hearts were in captiva uh, captivated by the testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. They were not given unto this system of Babel where their minds were confused, uh, their thoughts and the concepts of Yah. That's what the Jesus has done. That's why they celebrate Christmas and the hog days uh, and all of these pagan entities. Uh, we celebrate the feast days of Yah. We must keep them. He saw those that they were killed, slain for the word of Yah and for the testimony which they held. And they cry with a loud voice saying, How long, O Yah, Kodesh and true? Do you not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said to them that they should rest yet for a little season. See, that's why he gives us this little season. Uh, the more add to rest in it. To rest. Save all your vacation for that. We're going to rest. We don't make a dime. If, if they turn electricity off, that's all right. Uh, we're going to rest. He said rest for a little season. And those seven days represent the completion of Yah's perfect time. Great, his perfect rest. The perfect trial. And the eighth day is the new beginning of all things. So why do you think he just gave it seven days just to be doing something? No, it's vitally important, Yisrael Yah. He said that you should rest for a little season uh, until their fellow servants and their brothers, or Yisraelites, uh, ach, and they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. He said, just a little time. When all that I've ordained and testified about, out of the mouths of the prophet, when all of that is fulfilled, then we're going to see the great kingdom of Yah come to its fruition and establish here upon the earth. And, and Yachahan give us a beautiful picture of that. Listen, in Revelation eleven fifteen. Again, the word should be E7. Revelation eleven fifteen and the seventh melach sounded. And there was a great voice in Hashemah am saying, The Melchut, the kingdoms of the world, have become the kingdoms, the Melchut of our Yah, and of his Messiah, and he shall reign forever and ever. Listen here. And the four and the twenty elders which sat before Yah on their seats, they fell on their face in the Shechah, they began to worship Yah. Saying, we give you Toda, O Yashadiah, which are and were and to come 
Because you have taken to you your great power and you have and has reigned. And the nations were angry and your wrath is come. And the time of the death and they should be judged. That you shall give reward unto your servants. The nobi, the prophet. Vital to have the prophet. To your Yisraelite, Kiroshim, we that are the nothings of the earth. Also to them that fear your name. That they show reverence to your name, Yare. They tremble at the name of Yah. They bow, they tremble. He said, those that fear your name, small and great. And should destroy them that destroy the earth. And he looks up. I know what it says in most renditions, the temple. But it should be sukha. And the sukkah of Yah was open in the Shemayim. And there was seen in his sukkah the ark of his bread or the ark of his testimony. And the ark of his testimony is Yeshua Hamashiach. He said the ark of his testimony. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake. And great hell. He said the heavens were open. Has not Yah opened the heavens? And sent down your shoe Hamashiach? Have we not beheld and seen the ark of his testimony? In that ark. In that little box. But in the box or in the conduit of flesh. We beheld the testimony of Almighty Yah and Yahshua. That's what that body held. And your Kahan saw it in a way so dynamic. When the heavens were open. He saw the sukkah. And that's what this body is. It's a sukkah. It is just an enclosure that contains the truth of his power, his Torah, and his testimony. Yisraya. That's why he sends the ruach that it pours out the oil of refreshing upon us. That keeps us fresh in the ways of Yah's Torah and in the testimony of the prophets of Yahshua HaMashiach. That the light of his excellence will shine from us. That his word would enrich us. That others will see this promise of his word in us Yisrael. we got to have that that's what we must gather we see the day that is approaching uh, upon us we shall fill ye not the fellowship one with the other to live to associate to be among each other come it's going to be difficult you trying to get from uh, Indiana to a place uh, of comfort of fellowship we know how it is uh, when we are all by ourselves needing fellowship uh, we began to do things, fall away. At least you may fall away here, but at least you got eyes on you. And someone can help you and bring you back uh, into the way straight. Yeah. That's the fact. That's why Yah knew it's not, it was not excellent for man to be alone. He did not meant for us to live apart from each other. That's why when he gave them into slavery, uh, he brought them all into Gosha. That's where they all settled. All of the house. All of the house. All of the house. 70 went in and over 5 million that came out. He brought them out. We should fellowship. Fellowship is more than just meeting on Shabbat shaking hands. And so I'll see you next week. That's not fellowship. You, you're riding in the same ship together. You're sailing down, down the river of Yah's bank of Jordan. You're selling together. And we should fill you not the fellowship with each other. Congregate. And so the nations will see the greatness of his riches upon his people. The reason we are fearful because we would do something that we think others would do. That's why we're fearful. We think that he'll do this or she'll do that. No, that's what you will do. That's why we're fearful. True messenger of Yah, he's... His strength is that he'll, he wants the people to judge him constantly. His actions, his deeds, his acts, his ways. I want them to. Come on. That's what keeps a man straight. You by yourself, your judgment gets corrupt. You do things that are wicked and you, and you, prevent, and you don't even prevent yourself from doing. You, you give credence to yourself. That is the truth. That is the truth. That's why everybody's seeking their own. They're not seeking the things that you are. I want to close here with these verses here. From Revelation 12, 17. This is our strength. Hallelujah. This is the, as, this is the conclusion of all the matters here, Yisrael. 
Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 17. It tells us of this great battle that shall ensue the people of Yah. And the behemoth or the dragon was angry with the woman, the assembly, Yisra'iah, the call out elect. And he went to make war with the here the remnant. We are the remnant of her seed. The remnant. He went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Which kept, see, which keeps, which guard, which keep the mitzvah of Yah. The testimony. I mean the, the Torah. And have the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. We must speak according to the Torah because the Torah testifies of the testimony. The Torah testifies of the testimony. And the word was made flesh. And by the power of his word all things are as they are Yisraeli. And when we have the Torah and the power of this testimony of the word, then we have the revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach. He becomes real. He is real in us. So that's why many folks, that's why these, uh, uh, these whole houses don't teach of the Torah of Yah. You don't need that. You don't need that. You don't have to remember the Shabbat. Well, if I don't need the Shabbat, I can do all of this. I can go kill me who I want to. I can commit adultery. I can steal the way I want to. I can bear false witness and I can covet. You understand that? I can build me a God and erect it. Yah said we should not make any image of the things that are in the earth, uh, 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 in the heavens, or uh, in the earth, or beneath the ground. Anything we should not make an image unto that. For what reason? That we should bow down and worship it. We should never make an image to bow down and worship. And that those that bow down to their children, their sins, their wickedness, uh, they love them more than they love Yah. They will be in the association that with the people of Yah. Come on. They compromise with the sins of their daughters, their sons, their grandchildren. They make them right when they're wicked as hell. That's wrong, Yisrael. Yeah? They make provision for some of the most wickedest ones. She's living like a dirty whore, shocking and everything. When she want to go out and shake her ass at night, you keep the little boy, you keep little Tom Tom Jimmy, and you keep little Shanaka Rakatuka. It's wrong. That's a damn wickedness. It's wrong to do that. It's wrong to do that. I'm not going to strengthen your whore, am I? I'm not keeping her. That's the truth. She goes out and shake her ass all night like a dirty whore. You strengthen her hand to do that. I will not do that. But preacher, can you take me to see my daughter? I'm not taking you. know where to see her. Dirty heifer. Rejects truth. It's wrong to do that, Gisraya. Well, these my little grandbabies, so I, I, I'm the grandma. I will keep them. And while she's out doing the dog dog, and he's out doing the punk walk, He's doing the crib walk. Come on, Yisraya, you don't do that. You don't do that. You don't rejoice in their wickedness and their polluted ways. You don't strengthen the hands of the wicked. You don't do that. Daddy, can I drop the grandbabies off? Where are you going? Well, I'm going out with some friends. No, you cannot drop them off. That's how you say that. Hallelujah. There are folks get upset when I talk like that. Because they're doing it. All right. They're doing it. I will not do it. I will never do it. I will never do it. I will never. And there are many that do things like that. It's one thing that we as leaders, we must be, we must be corrected and judged by this Torah before any man. We as the leaders. It's duplicity. I tell you one thing and I'm doing something else. I say one thing in my actions is something else. That's duplicity. I'm a hypocrite. I'm, I don't want to be a new hypocrite. Of all things, you all, I don't want to do that to you all. I'm not here to deceive you. Hallelujah. As the old ones would say, nah, just do what I say and not what I do, then you're a damn hypocrite. You can do what I do. Do what I do. Hallelujah. You know where to find me, so you want to find what I'm doing, just come over. Hallelujah. It doesn't take me five minutes to open the door, two minutes. Come on in. Oh, man, I lock the door. Because as soon as it gets dark, I always just lock the door. I mean, when I say lock the door, I just put the, look what you call the look. Come on, someone wants to come in my house, they can come in there. I may be sitting in that chair, just slide back. Oh, oh, it's, oh okay. okay. I didn't, come on, man, I forget. Hallelujah. I want to close with this right here in the book of Revelation. Hallelujah. Chapter 19, verse 10. This is when we are gathered into the kingdom, Hashem I am. We have triumphant over the powers of hell. We're going to barak Yah for all of his great judgment. Revelation 19.10. 
When the Melach came unto Yachahan, he said, I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, see that you do not do this, my friend. He said, I'm your fellow servant and of your Yisraelite brother. And that have the testimony of Yahshua. That's what we have. Worship Yah for the testimony of Yahshua is the Ruach of prophecy of the number. See, if you don't have the testimony of Yahshua, you don't understand prophecy. If you don't have the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, you don't understand prophecy. We are the remnant that keep his mitzvah and the testimony. And that's how we overcome. If we don't have that, we don't overcome. If we don't speak to ourselves according to the Torah and the testimony, it's because there's no light in us. And if you have no light in you, you don't know where you're going, do you? You go, you go down a, a, an errant way and you find yourself lost from the commonwealth of Yisrael. Yeah. And then we're just like blind men walking in darkness, groping. We're blind men leading the blind. And that's why we have much of that today, Yisrael. Yeah. We don't have so You can't go out and be a soldier unless you're taught how to be one. And it's the first thing you do with a soldier, you must break him down to show him it's not, there's something more important than him and his, him gaining a perch of position. It is for the kingdom and the purpose of the kingdom. Until he understand that, he will never make an excellent soldier. And to progress from a soldier to a warrior, you have to do the duties of a soldier. And these boys today, they're not even soldiers. And they have no warrior's mentality. Because the whole purpose of everything is not the individual, uh, individuality uh, accomplishment. It is the kingdom work. I have no work. Y'all did not give me any work, uh, a work for David Roberts or Riak Dawid. He gave me the work of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And the work is the same. No, he did not get me any work any difference in specific no more than any other man. It is the same. That we must keep the Torah. We must have the witness of the Torah and the testimony of Yah, which is the power of Yahshua, that we may have light in us. He's given me a work. He hasn't given you anything. He gave gifts unto men to bring us all into the perfect law and the perfect Torah of Almighty Yah. That the witness of Yahshua Hamashiach is real in us. That's one of the most appalling things. I've never said that all of my life. Even when I was ignorant, I've never said that. He's giving me, I got to do this. I'm a teach. I'm, a, I'm an evangelist. Then do the work of an evangelist. You do the work of an evangelist, you got to forsake wife, children, and all, man. Huh? Because you're gone. You have no certain dwelling place, no place to lay your head. These are drugstore evangelists and teachers and prophets. I listened to this man, or the, or just a few bit. Someone has subscribed to our YouTube, and I looked at them, and he had someone over there preaching that uh, uh, you should not keep the shiva. It's a, it's a physical act. I delight when he says, Sha Shaul said, I delight in the Torah of Yah from the inward part. Well, why did he delight from the inward part? I looked at this man and said, what a dismal, appalling stupidity. Yeah, I delight in the Torah of Yah from the inward parts. Why? Because he has written it in there. He has put that in my heart. He has written it in there. Come on. That's why Shaul could say that. For I delight in the Torah of Yah in the inward parts. He said, this is a natural act. No, it's a, it's a law of, of, of spirituality that he has written in our bosom. So we delight that he has put in that law. When we hear that, uh, we delight in the actions of that Torah, of that mitzvah. And I looked at this little clown. I say, what a jackass. What a, I say, yeah, I would love to just sit before him and show him the fool he is. Because that's what he was. Speaks against things that he know not of. If you don't understand a thing, man, just because you keep the dirty whore day, and you're afraid you're going to lose a little crowd, he would. Ain't no doubt about that. I'm going to close with this. I remember a young man called me right down here. I know exactly where the whole house is, and it's a big one, too. Probably four or five hundred people every, every first day to that dirty whole house. And this was years back, probably five years, maybe six. I don't recall. He called me. He said, Preacher. I've been looking and I've found you. I'm right down here in Chesterfield. And he said, what I've been preaching is a lie. And so I could just sense the distraught in the man's voice. When he told me where he was, I said, okay. I know where that's at. I know where that big church is. There's a big whorehouse right down there in Chesterfield. He said, we got a school. We got this. You know, my wife works here. I work here. But I just, he said, man... He said, I know what I'm listening to, what I'm hearing. I know it's right. That's what this man said. I said, young man. He said, so I got to, I got to abandon all that I've learned and taught. I said, yes, my friend. I said, yes. Very gentle. I said, look, my friend, you come see me. 
you and your wife don't don't bring nobody else you just come visit my issue and come see us here in the community he called me back a few days he says i'm coming just my wife and i i, I just got to sit and talk with you but his main issue was that he's going to lose everything he knew it he was going to lose the whole house he was going to lose that tremendous floor income I don't know, I guarantee he, they probably had, I don't know how many students they had in the school or the, they had a kindergarten. His wife was running that. They had everything. You got, uh, you got about 50 kids in kindergarten. You get that government assistance. You get the monies for the, what is that they give you for the, uh, for the health of the children? What is that, that they give those? They give the nurses, you get money. But you get money, you know, for the, for the WIC type program. For the WIC. For the WIC. That's WIC. What is that? Women and what? Yeah, women and for children. Yeah, women and for children. You get the WIC. You get that money now. You can get that. And you get all that money, you're buying food and, and all that other money, just straight out flat, flat cash. Because you're going to pay yourself seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000 a week. That's what you're going to do. And so his biggest problem was that I got to give it all up. What do I do? He was concerned with that. So he called me the midweek. He said, I'll be there. And with great anticipation, I was looking for the young man. He never came. And from that point, I would call him repetitively. Any other time you call the number, they answer. Every time the voicemail. When he would see that number rolling in there, he knew he would not answer. And I said, what I would do, I would go down and visit and just go and sit on the front row. He would know who I am. And I said, no, yeah, that's not what you've given me to do. And that's it. And so they're not about to tell the people the truth. They're not the, about to go away from this Jesus talk. There's a precious daughter out there in Arizona that uh, the whole house she attends I don't know if she's still there they have this prayer type thing that they pray people call in and in Arizona Phoenix I believe where it's at the pastor of the assembly said that you're right that is his name but I don't want you all praying in that name I don't want you praying in the name of Yahshua in the name of Yah I don't want you to do that oh it's absolutely right you think he's going to confront that knowing his salary? He's making $2,500 a week, $3,500 a week, and the offerings. You think he's going to? They're paying for a car for him that he may drive, living in a nice parsonage, a nice house, no payment. All that thirty-five is free money. He's putting that back. I'm just making an assumption here, just showing you how they work. You think he's going to go away from that? He get a clothing allotment every month, probably $350, $400. You think he's going to turn that down? No, sir, he's not going to do that. He's not going to confront that issue. And there are those that have been discussing. She said there are those that have left. And this, sometimes she may send three. She, the last week she sent three offerings in one week. That's how she does. I lied to you not. And you think that man is going to turn? You think he's going to go away from that? You think he's going to stop that? They're not going to stop. Just like this young man down here. He knew he was wrong. He says, I've, I've taught the people wrong. I said, yes, sir. I said, but that's all right. Come on. I'll help you, my friend. Yeah, I will show you the right way. Just come talk. I know how to talk to him. But he didn't want that. He didn't want the Torah nor the testimony because he had no light in him at all. Immediately, the loudest one in that whorehouse would have rose up. You believe me? You believe me? And once the women start rising up, the weak men in there because he's allowed his wife to preach and all that. Or they may use his name as a novelty and say a quote that the Jews call him that, unquote. His name was so sacred that you couldn't say it. That's what these liars would do. But that's not what the book says. Well, I've been knowing Jesus all my life. Well, hell, you've been knowing Christmas all your life, too. It's still a damn lie. It may be Jesus' birthday, but it's not your sure's 
their birth. You've been taught lies all your life. Our parents didn't intend to teach us lies. They were just taught lies. They just handed down all they knew. They weren't trying to be deceiving. They were just ignorant of the matter. They didn't know any better. So they gave us what they had gotten. Come on. That's it. And their parents, because they were indoctrinated with a system that was so wrong. By even their masters and those that had them in shibuth and bondage and captivity. Come on, Yisra. May ya barak. I'm tired, all right? May ya barak you, all you that have joined us. May the riches of ya. And let us stand to our feet. Ya barak you all. Toda for joining us today. I know it's a short one. I'm, like Mikhaya always said that you, you, he's written to me, you didn't preach that long enough, I know, but sometimes when you stand up here and your body, you know, I'll get, get it back. I've been lazy for these last seven days, eight days, nine, so I've got to get back into the floor thing, and that's what gives me energy when I'm moving and laboring and working, all right? Let us turn toward Yahushua, like in all things about we barak you. We told you for this day, for your people that have come, those that have joined us for the, for the feasts, and those that are here, and those that have joined us for the live broadcast today, we ask you to barak them in Yahshua's name. And give strength unto Yisrael, Yah, wherever they're scattered, and touch them all in your blessed assurance of name. God us all, give us all rest this Shabbat, as we barak you for all things, and the blessed and the assurance, name, assurance of the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. With our voices, we cry hallelujah. 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 Ya barak Yisrael, Hallelujah.